Welcome to Responding to COVID-19 on TTT, Talk City 91.1 FM, and at TTT Live Online on Facebook. I'm DK Rostar. The disruption of COVID-19 has offered the chance for reflection and new directions. Now, one of the issues raised has been what we eat, where we get it from, setting protocols in place to ensure current food security, and to create an environment fostering broad appreciation for culture. With us today to discuss cultivating our reality is Nirmala Devi Singh Prasad, CEO of the National Agricultural Marketing and Development Corporation, or NAMDEVCO, Alpha Senon, founder and executive director of Y Farm, which is an NGO geared towards creating innovative approaches to attract young people to agricultural jobs. And we have Rachel Rennie and David Thomas of the Market Movers co-founders, an online distribution company, in addition to other farm-to-table initiatives. Now, Nirmala, I want to start with you, thank you, and give us an idea, a status update on the current work that NAMDEVCO has been going through during this period. So, good afternoon, all. Uh, good afternoon to TPT and Talk 91.1 FM. And to the uh, host, um, in this program. So, what have you done, Defco, been doing? Well, I would like to say, first and foremost, we're continuing our work in the development and implementation of a national good agricultural practices certification standard. Uh, that work is continuing in the background as we speak. Also, we're continuing our work on the development of a national grace and standard. A uh, document that can be used as an efficient marketing tool going forward. Uh, we're looking at five commodities in the first instance. We have continued the operations of all of our markets, inclusive of the farmers market. Which I'd like to mention, we are about to launch a new farmers market this Sunday at the Larry Groom Stadium in Arima. Uh, from 6 a.m. to 12 noon. So I'd like to take the opportunity to invite all and remind you all of the other nine farmers markets that we have established throughout the country. Uh, this also says that uh, we also, I'm also saying that we are continuing with our fish market, fish wholesale markets, our retail markets, and our other wholesale markets. We have um, been doing a huge project, a food distribution project, in conjunction with the Ministry of Social Development and Family Services, where we're providing approximately um, 150,000 to 170,000 pounds of produce um, per month. Um, those figures can be, you know, of course, increased um, for some some time, a period of time, as long as the project runs. And we also are continuing to provide size and volume data to all of our stakeholders. As you all would know, uh, just go to our NAMIS website, go to our Facebook pages, our Instagram pages. You're going to see information on price and volume data that we continue to collect and disseminate which we know data is very important, especially during these types of times where information is what is needed to make critical business decisions and critical decisions in our own daily lives. Thank you so much. And Alpha, I'll go next to you. What has what ha, what has Y been up to? Yeah, pleasant good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so you know, we we one of the things that we quickly jumped at at the, at the start of the COVID-19 um, quarantine period was providing seeds, seedlings, sweet potato, um, cottons, uh, cassava sticks for folks to get their, their land planted. You know, of course, the quarantine period allowed for, for folks to have this extra time. to sort of now realize the importance of let me put something in the ground. So what we did is that we created a sort of slogan to go with it called Plant Your Plate. And we created it around a movement um, which encouraged a, a really large WhatsApp group for those folks who now get in planted, now get in farmed up, to sort of um, to, to, to allow for our platform to be able to share, to be able to exchange goods, exchange information, motivation. Um, and that has been going really, really well because these are, these are now new beginners of growers. And we're going to start some plant to play challenges here and there around the country as well, too, 
actually starting an esports as being very soon a partnership with the Volunteer Center of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, one of the other initiatives um, we, we literally kicked off as well was Dashi in Your Doorstep Market, which is essentially an online WhatsApp um, ordering of food packages for folks, um, especially in and around the Sapphire area. A lot of the elderly folks in Sapphire started reaching out, you know, to be able to help them with, you know, bringing food to their doorstep and whatnot. And we literally jumped at it and started being able to distribute towards them. Thirdly, um, we kicked off something called the Cyber Farm Collective Movement, which is essentially going on each other farms to be able to provide labor. As young people, you know, it's very difficult to be able to hire other folks to help you with your with, 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 with getting farmed up. So we can, have, as farmers, come together and we go to each other farms to be able to support each other with labor, motivation, and of course, inspiration to really continue growing. And that those are some of the top things that we really embarked on. All right, and just before I jump to you, and I'll ask you, Rachel, but just before we go to what it is you're doing, uh, Ms. Debbie Singh Prasad and Alpha, you all have raised some uh, issues in terms of using technology hand in hand with actually the, the labor, as well as partnerships and the challenges. So we get to that in a little bit. But Rachel and David, I know that the workload has increased because people are discovering you, and I see that the Yaba Bowls are out. But what are you doing during this period, Rachel? Um, well, during this period, we've just been basically doing what we normally do, just a thousand fold. Um, we've managed to increase production, secure more suppliers, um, service a wider range of customers. So we've been delivering to much further distances and things like that. And we've just been able to overall increase the efficiency of what we've been doing. So we've enhanced things on the website. I mean, we're online delivery service, so things like online credit card payments are going to be launched in a couple of days. Um, we've added a lot of features like meals made um, wholesome. We're pushing like welcome, welcome um, wellness Wednesdays because we realize that we want people to continue to feel good during and after COVID. Um, it was a time of like panic and things like that, and we realized that people started appreciating local food. Um, a customer of ours was saying he got to do a dessert that his mother used to make, which was just basically a grapefruit with um, a cherry on top. Uh, and he said it brought back so much memories and it brought back all this nostalgia. And he wondered why he stopped eating local fruits and why he stopped eating local vegetables. And that triggered something really insightful for us. And we wanted to continue to push the importance. Um, we were here, local food has been here now, especially during these times when we needed it most. And we want people to remember that even after you know the restrictions are uh, lifted and things like that so we've been really just pushing our agenda that we've been doing for the last 11 years just on a much larger scale and um, we've been able to service the diaspora as well they've been able to shop and send food to their families here a service that they didn't really have the um, things that they had before and now it's moving from a need to a lifestyle and that's the point and why we're trying to push it so that's beautiful. Alpha, I want to go back to a point you made. It's also, just before, Alpha, you, you, you spoke about plant your plate. And mm -hmm. there are a lot of new planters, people just finding an old bucket or a big bottle they have and, and pushing something in some soil. What are some of the opportunities that you think that this pandemic has uh, allowed for in Trinidad and Tobago? Yeah, I think there were many folks, um, especially those who follow our page and, you know, they're inspired by the work we do. Um, you know, they, they, they were always just there and kind of like not really, really planting just yet. You know, they always just, just kind of looking on and just kind of, you know, hmm, should I, should I not? How could I? Do I have the time? And this pandemic allowed them now, of course, with the whole, um, you know, being uncertain about food security and what's going to happen with our food and whatnot. Like, let me, put, let me plan something. It really pushed them over the edge to literally plan something. I think what it allows to is for us to be able to see the real true value of backyard gardening, front yard gardening, side yard gardening, at home, and being able to barter, you know, with those neighboring farmers or, or, or even your neighbors and whatnot. So it allows for some level of household food security to come into play in our lifestyle in Trinidad and Tobago. 
All right, and in speaking of pushing people over the edge, this has pushed us over time for the first half of this. This is responding to COVID-19 on TTT Talk City 91.1 FM and TTT Live Online on Facebook. We return with so much more. Stay with us. Welcome back. This is Responding to COVID-19 on TTT, Talk City 91.1 FM, and the TTT Live Online on Facebook. We're speaking with Nirmala Debi Singh Prasad, CEO of Namdevco, Alpha Senon of Y Farm, Rachel and David Thomas of The Market Movers. David, we haven't spoken as yet, so I want to ask you, what, uh -huh. are, what are some of the opportunities for, or your thoughts of linking technology and agriculture? Because we're seeing where people are able to order online, where people are sending WhatsApp messages to, to place orders. So where, where does technology fit into growing things out of the earth? Well, I mean, it has been very impactful in terms of, I mean, just as you mentioned, WhatsApp is a closer connectivity to city farmers who might be in the rural areas. I mean, I could actually, a farmer could send me a picture of his crop, where he's at, um, he might be in, in our crude, right? I'm maybe better, and I can actually see what he's producing. He can send me a video. I can, and we could have that kind of interaction. And because is that communication is channel is so open, it it a lot of information is passed as well. Uh, example, when my farmers he dropped off some stuff, I was looking at it and I saw a little pest problem on it, and I was able to send him a video and show him he was able to deal with it in his farm. Right, so that that communication is open. And normally, if you just pick up something back there, you know, you go, that's it. You don't really have much communication with that person until you see them again. And I think so. That technology and the information as passing is, is very critical to where we are now in terms of agriculture and agricultural production. I mean, it's even expanding now to different forms of um production methods. I have a lot of back as I produce backyard gardening, people doing you know, um, hydroponic systems and a lot of our suppliers are actually people who do in these um these systems and we encourage them to plant more. I and mean, because they would be a little more way and conscious of seed growing practices and all that. Okay, thank you. Nirmal, I want to go back to you please because you mentioned the word NAMIST, but please explain what that piece of technology is and how it factors into some of the things that NAMDEFCO does. So now, Mr. data. Um, it can give you historical data and it gives you very timely, up to date data. The um, information of what's sold at the Norris Dinner and Northern Wholesale Market on a daily basis is put into that database within two hours of the collection of the data. It also holds data on select farmers' markets. Um, in terms of the prices and volumes at the market. And it also holds a host of other information in terms of price and volume data from the local markets and select groceries and um, supermarkets throughout the island. So NAMIS is basically your database for price and volume data. Um, it's one of the technological, in um, you, um, technological interventions that we've used here at the um, they go to advise decision makers, policy makers, business enthusiasts, you know, in terms of what's available on the market. And it goes in conjunction with a new bit of technology that we are also looking into, and it's cloud-based solutions uh, to be able to do your businesses and, and get information more readily out of this out of NAMDEFCO. Um, not also it will not only have the ability to give information, but it will also have the ability to accrue information out of the field into that um, cloud-based solution. So that is something that we're working on very aggressively, more so during this COVID period, because we understand the need for social distancing, we understand the uh, impact of droplet infections, and uh, you know uh, just how this virus spreads. And so the more available, the more technology we use in getting information out there, the better it will be for decision makers, menu planners. I mean, you can name anybody who needs information to make a, a decision. The information will be available in a timely manner. 
Um, if you may permit me, there is one other technological intervention that I'd like to mention that we utilize here at the corporation uh, since the COVID, and that is the technical temperature storage, which um, we've made these storage units available to various farms in various parts of the island, and also at the Piaco Packing House, we've ramped up our cold storage, low temperature storage, to maintain the post harvest um, life of the next commodity. So um, this just some of the you know some of the new things that we're doing with respect to technology. Yeah, the corporation. Thank you so much. Rachel, speaking of cold storage, one of the one of the services that the market movers offers is having select fruits, I believe uh, passion fruit as well as papaya, stored, frozen, and in some pretty, pretty pouches. Let me know a little more about that, thank you. Well, well, the farm and function, as Namala mentioned, is, is kind of funny because we launched that business because of NAMIS. We were able to access data um, on how much pawpaw production was being done, brought into the markets every month. So we were able to plan and launch our product because of that data. And I mean, as an online business, data is vital for us. It, we can see what someone is looking at, what, how often they buy it, what they're spending on, things like that. So Common Function is the only line of local frozen fruit on the market. Um, it's used to make smoothies. And honestly, since COVID, our sales have really gone up because I mean, the strawberries and the berries are just not as available. And now people are relying on these local products to use and make their smoothies and maintain their lifestyle. So that data is really important for us because we need to know and track what farmers are producing. NAMDEFCO has given us tons of farmers that we can access and get products, get supply, get consistent supply. So, I mean, that data has really been integral for us to launch a local product and I think now especially is the time to push local and to push local products um, in a meaningful way and our customers are just so happy about it. So. And speaking of pushing local, even when we're speaking and you're speaking to us right now, Alpha, looking behind you, we see that there's a superhero in our midst. So speak about your, your efforts in terms of fostering that drive towards agriculture among the young ones. Yeah, so, you know, we, we took a very creative approach with our advocacy, our constant advocacy campaign, um, where we use Agriman as a, as a brand or as a brand ambassador for food and nutrition security to empower these children, to inspire them, you know, to let them know that food providers are powerful people, if not the most powerful people, right? So Agriman, Agriman was created. We have a female character put in the sister. We, you know, we share stories via comic books. We are about to launch a new comic book very soon about digital agriculture, where we'll be introducing a new character called Agribots, like robots, Agribots, right? So look out for that, you know, and um, it's, it's very exciting. And of course, we must start with the children. We can't just wait till, till university to start to talk about food security. That was the first time I heard the word food security, and that, that was crazy. So, you know, yeah, we have to start with the children. And if you want to make the sector you know, um, a real sustainable one. The kids are the ones to grow up to become farmers. As a matter of fact, they can start from being farmers now, not necessarily with the grow up. You know, so that's the whole concept. All right, so thank you so much. We are wrapping up, but I want to get contact information from everyone, please. Uh, Alpha, let me get con your, your contact information, thanks. Yeah, um, alphasenon1 at gmail.com and my, my phone number is 382-5780 and find me on Facebook, Alphama, the Agri Edutainer. Thank you so much. David, The Market Movers. So our website is themarketmovers.com and there you'll find all the information that you need and our telephone contact is 221-3555. Thank you so much. Nirmala, Namdevko. Okay, and so we are available on Facebook and Instagram at Namdefco. Our contact, our email is contact at namdefco.com, and feel free to call us at six four seven three two one eight for all departments, whether it's um, marketing, quality assurance, uh, various outstations, farmers markets. You can contact us at that one number. Thank you so much. It. And, well, David is also the market mover, so we get that info as well. And But thank you, the four of you, for making the time. We knew the time was going to run out before we ran out of questions and conversation. But my father says it's better for people to invite you back 
than asking you to leave. So we look forward to having that conversation on, a, on, a, on an ongoing basis. And this has been responding to COVID-19 on TTT, Talk City 91.1 FM, and TTT Live Online on Facebook. I'm DK Ronstar. Thank you for viewing.